In this video, I'm going to talk about synapses, which are structures where neurons contact and communicate with their target cells. Most synapses are called chemical synapses. Chemical. Because neurotransmitter molecules communicate information across the synapse. A few synapses are called electrical. Electrical. And with electrical synapses, the neuron and its target cell are physically connected to allow membrane potential changes to flow directly from the neuron to its target cell. Chemical synapses are more complex, and I'll briefly talk about just chemical synapses in this video. Here I've drawn an axon in green and one axon terminal at the end of it. And then I've just drawn a target shape to represent a target cell, one of the types of cells that a neuron will communicate information to. Chemical synapses have a small gap it's actually much smaller than I've drawn here, but I just need a little room to draw. So that with chemical synapses, the axon terminal of the neuron and the target cell are not physically touching each other. There's a small gap. And this gap is called the synaptic cleft. Synaptic cleft. The membrane of the neuron that's facing the synaptic cleft is called the presynaptic membrane. Let me just write pre here for presynaptic membrane, which is on the neuron side. And then the membrane of the target cell that's facing the synaptic cleft is called the postsynaptic membrane. So let me just write post here, post dash for postsynaptic membrane on the target cell. Just inside the presynaptic membrane of the neuron are vesicles, or little bubbles, that are called synaptic vesicles. So synaptic vesicles, vesicles, and these vesicles are full of neurotransmitter, the molecule that's going to communicate information across the synaptic cleft. So the vesicles have the neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter. And on the postsynaptic membrane over here are receptors for that neurotransmitter that's contained in the synaptic vesicles inside the presynaptic membrane. When an action potential reaches an axon terminal, let me just write AP for action potential, the neurotransmitter inside the synaptic vesicles is usually released into the synaptic cleft where it crosses to bind to the neurotransmitter receptors on the postsynaptic membrane of the target cell. There are many types of neurotransmitter molecules, and there are many different types of neurotransmitter receptors. The response of the target cell to neurotransmitter binding to the neurotransmitter receptors depends on which neurotransmitter is released into the synaptic cleft and what type of receptor it binds to on the postsynaptic membrane. The response of a target cell to neurotransmitter binding to its receptors is usually an excitatory or inhibitory graded potential of some size and duration, or the response may involve other changes in cell behavior. After a neurotransmitter is released from the presynaptic membrane and spends some time binding to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane, it then leaves the synaptic cleft, either by diffusing away or it may be actively removed by one of several mechanisms. And this allows the synapse to be reset so that it is ready to communicate more information from the neuron to the target cell. The efficiency of information travel between neurons and their target cells, particularly when their target cells are other neurons, may increase or decrease based on experience, which is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. And at the level of an individual synapse, neuroplasticity means that synapses that are used frequently get stronger, so that a bigger response may occur every time an action potential reaches the axon terminal. The opposite is also true of synapses that are used infrequently. A smaller response may occur each time an action potential reaches the axon terminal. 
Neuroplasticity may also involve changes beyond that which happens to individual synapses, and the actual number of synapses between neurons and their target cells may change. For example, more synapses may develop between frequently used axons and dendrites by sprouting of more axon terminals or more dendritic branches, and the opposite is true of those used infrequently. This phenomenon of neuroplasticity is often referred to with a great phrase that states that neurons that fire together, wire together, so that pathways in the nervous system that are used a lot develop stronger connections and become more efficient at moving information, and the opposite is true of pathways in the nervous system that aren't used very much.